national dirty little secret that every year we're putting down millions of dogs. continue to irresponsibly breed millions of dogs in horrific conditions just to make a buck. It is time to stand up for man's best friend and make sure that each and every animal gets the warm, loving home it deserves. <laughs> inhumane conditions that these dogs are living in every day, day in and day out. These dogs, uh, most of them are malnourished. Uh, they're living in rabbit hutches stacked to the ceiling, uh, standing on wire, uh, rusted wire, uh, no water, um, uh, ulcers in their eyes. Uh, they perform their own cesarean sections, which is legal in Pennsylvania. Uh, they debark them with pipes to break their vocal cords so their neighbors don't know that they have 700 dogs living in their barn. See um, and experience what a puppy mill really looks like what a puppy mill feels like. Rows and stacks of cages. As he gets, and if you watch him, he's just gonna run and run in a circle. That's how he spends his life. What we're looking at is just basic puppy mill. The shows where compassion doesn't count anymore and this becomes all about profit. Look at this guy's foot. Well, if you can see that. unable to comprehend human interaction. They're untouchable. You know, they cower to the back of the cage, extremely terrified. Did nothing but try my, my hardest not to cry. To see it in person and to, to experience what it feels like to look in the eyes of the dogs on the other side of those cages was life-changing for me. Returning to our story, you've seen what can happen in a puppy mill. Animals neglected, abused, unhealthy puppies passed on to pet stores. You might be wondering, who's supposed to be watching out for the welfare of these animals? Images of dogs in cages and overbred may disturb you. But you should know it's all perfectly legal, provided minimum requirements are met for things like cage size, cleanliness, and veterinary care. It's the USDA that enforces the law. So we tried to show the conditions we've found at licensed breeders to the USDA's man in charge, veterinarian Ron DeHaven. But he didn't want to see our video. You've elected not to look at those tapes. Why? I'm not sure that a videotape always accurately depicts the real situation. stock again on the best disposition or temperament or ge genetics or pedigree they're looking for the cheapest dog available that will produce puppies nothing else Sally and Tara's eye problems may be genetic too all three dogs will be scheduled for surgery soon to treat their eyes oh, 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 oh. there we go come on limestone kennel was part of a complex industry that is in theory closely regulated Large-scale commercial kennels sometimes sell puppies direct to pet stores, but usually they sell to a broker who sells on to a pet store. Kennels that sell wholesale like this are subject to the Federal Animal Welfare Act and are licensed and inspected by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Well, the USDA requirements are bare minimum, and in fact the law even states the word minimum requirements. And so just basic food and water, um, supposed to be clean and supposed to give them comfort from, from the bad weather, uh, extremes of temperature. And that, that's basically it. Uh, I refer to those standards as survival standards. If you follow USDA standards, will a dog survive? Probably, yes. 
but is it humane? Absolutely not. The two classifications of dealers licensed by the United States Department of Agriculture, A, B, and C. A dealers are puppy mills, people that breed, they breed animals for research facilities, uh, they breed for commercial reasons. That's an A dealer. I'm giving you a simplification version of it. C dealer are people who have show animals, show dogs, show horses, zoo, circuses, roadside shows, all have class C licenses by USDA. A USDA class B licensed dealer, we just call them B dealers, those are people that procure animals already in existence, for example, your dog, your cat, by stealing it, taking on the false pretenses, free to good home ads. They take that animal and they turn around and they sell it to research facility. And they're licensed by the United States Department of Agriculture for it. That's why I call pet theft organized crime sanctioned by the USDA. This is what the Class B dealers are. It, and, and it's been difficult to get it through Congress. We've had it in Congress now for 11 years. But do USDA inspection reports depict the real situation? For instance, this USDA report claims there was nothing wrong with this commercial breeder in Missouri. But the Missouri Humane Society found plenty wrong just a month and a half later, when they raided the place in 1998. Dogs starved to death, decomposed skeletons. They found things like no food or drinkable water in any of the pens. Explain to me how one day there could be no problems with a breeding facility, and a little over a month later, there's this. Two trailers hold 120 cages. Put up to three or four hundred dogs in there, probably. All right, here we go. DeHaven told us the federal government is doing a good job with what it has, 65 inspectors for the entire country, but conceded that only half of all breeders even meet the USDA's minimum standards. Nielsen Farms, despite years of safety, health, and sanitation violations documented in the USDA's own records, no legal action was ever taken. And the inspector who found no problems at this facility with dead and starving dogs, he left the USDA in 1998, only to be charged in 1999 with unlawfully running his own dog business without a USDA license.
simply claimed we'd mated this deceased AKC Golden Retriever with this spade one. We filled out this one-page application which says we certified all the information was true. Put our check for $20 in the mail and soon had an AKC registered litter of eight non-existent pups. Each puppy was sent its own individual registration form. Now we had papers to register eight ineligible puppies. Well, let's face it, it's not legal, you know. Uh, no. I took stone dogs to him. Hello, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, we go, we go to Paragool and get dogs. We go um, anywhere that we can... Uh, see a dog in the in a yard. We don't care if it's a chihuahua. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it'll bring us money. Well, he's probably paying people off too. You know, mm -hmm. I saw when one of the cops or sheriffs, whatever they are down here, came through. And when they drove by where the dogs were, all they, they did was wave. Yeah, yeah. They waved and kept on going. I thought, well, somebody's paying this guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they um, they get paid pretty good. Uh, yeah. They leave us alone. They don't bother us. Uh, they get their share of money, and they don't have to do anything but just turn their head. is a nationwide crisis. The Humane Society of the United States estimates that as many as two to four million puppy mill dogs are sold every year. It really is a supply and demand issue. You know, too often people think, well, this is just me and I'll just get this one puppy, or they think they're rescuing a puppy from a pet store. And the reality is this is a business and you're not rescuing that puppy. You're simply opening up a cage for another puppy to be ordered up because as soon as that cage is empty, there's another puppy coming. It's so important that people take strong consumer action, that they make a choice that they're not going to support puppy mills. Emotional torture, 
Confinement, isolation, crushed spirits, exhausted, no love, no hope, no milk left to give. Breeding factory, discarded like garbage. This is a puppy mill. If you're considering buying a puppy from a pet shop, consider this. 99% of pet shops who sell puppies buy from puppy mills. 99%. Exclusive hidden camera investigation. Are pet stores selling sick animals? CBS 2 investigative reporter David Goldstein went undercover to expose what goes on behind closed doors. We found some of them sick, over-medicated, and underweight. While you see the cute and cuddly dogs in the pet stores, we went behind closed doors, undercover with a hidden camera sending in a producer who volunteered at pet stores for weeks, exposing what really goes on. Do you sell sick animals? Why do you tell people that you're a vet? We uncovered things that one pet store owner didn't want to talk about. Well, oh, please talk to me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hey, 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 put the camera. Hey, hey, do it. Stop it. Almost 1,300, yeah. Yeah, this is for a poodle. Uh, 360 and selling it for 1200 All these are all the dogs that go in that window, so right. they just put them all in this one. There's actually another dog in there, but that dog is now in the back. So whatever that dog's back there for, they've all been exposed to that dog. So one of the dogs with a possible URI was with these dogs, they've all been exposed. Whatever. It could be URI, Giardia, Coccidia, I don't know. There's no label on it. And there's a required to because the animal control came in. They can get in trouble for not identifying the issue with the dog. Patients require a prescription from a veterinarian for each puppy. Prescriptions we never saw. The same way that radios and, and appliances are being manufactured. These commercial money-driven breeding facilities are known as puppy mills. It's estimated there are 10,000 in the U.S. alone, many located in the Midwest, and many supplying small pups to pet stores across the country, including right here in California. You end up with a lot of sick animals being sold through these pet stores, and unfortunately it's the consumer that bears the burden. Pets left at the mercy of others. And these animals can't call you and say, Mr. Goldstein, you know, we're having a problem. They can't call me. They can't do anything except sit there and take it. I'm the proud owner of Pet Rush, pet store in the city of Glendale. I was uh, the first pet store that became humane, took the humane model in the city of Glendale. And since not only I've not gone out of business, but it really put us on the map. I became a lot more successful, I became a lot more uh, known in the city. Uh, and since uh, last year, we were responsible for adopting out over 300 dogs out of my little hole-in-the-wall pet store in the city of Glendale. These are dogs that all came from county shelters that did not stand a chance otherwise. Um, every time I go to the shelters and I look at these dogs, this is one dog that I know I can save. And yes, one less dog that I, I could have bought a dog from a puppy mill. I have. I did sell. I made money. But now I can tell you honestly from a business person, 
I'm making more money. I have a lot more clientele that trust me, knows me by name. They come to the store for me. And they honor what I've done. And that's what I would like to see these other two stores to become. So I'd like to offer my help to these other two stores to show them how they can embrace this humane model and what they have to do to become very successful. I tripled my income. I'm a living proof that this is not only possible, but it's very easy to do. The community will support. They will not only survive, but they will make money. And the dogs are out there. The puppies are out there. The recipes are full of puppies. I go every, every week. And there's a ton of them. And it, yes, it will cost you actually a lot less to get these, one of these dogs out of county shelter, spayed, neutered, macrochipped, vaccinated, temperament tested. None of those are true with these puppies they get from uh, puppy meals. Thank you for your time. There are a lot of real good people supporting this and they don't even know it because they're buying these puppies and they're buying these puppies and they're buying these puppies and they have no idea what they're supporting. They don't know where their money's going but it's going to this and this is a great day for these dogs but you know we've got thousands of these in this country so Please help me stop puppy mouth. Puppy from a store is a complete lie. You don't know any truth behind it in regards to where they come from to in terms of in-home medical at the store that they actually receive. So, buyer beware. <laughs>